Section 5.4, Finding Linear Equations. So we've actually already learned how to find linear equations in previous chapters in the book, and we're going to start off by reviewing what we've done before and then move on to some where we're going to need some new skills. So let's start off with a review example. Find the equation of the line with slope m equals 3 and passing through 0, negative 4. So we know that linear equations have the format y equals mx plus b, and it's just a matter of figuring out what the m is and what the b is and plugging them in. Well, in this case, they're telling us that m equals 3, and you might remember that b is from the y-intercept. It's the y-coordinate of the y-intercept. We can tell this is the y-intercept because it has a 0 for its x, and that means that that's b right there. So to write this equation, we just plug those two numbers in y equals, instead of mx, 3x, and then it would be plus negative 4, or I could just write minus 4. So there's the equation of the line, and, and we built a whole bunch of them that way, where we're thinking, all right, this is the format, where's the slope, where's the value of b, and we plug those in. But now I want to show you a twist on that. Find the equation of the line with the slope m equals negative 5, and passing through the point 3, negative 8. So it starts off sounding kind of the same, they want the equation of a line, so that's going to be y equals mx plus b. They told us the value of m, so y is going to be equal to negative 5x plus b. And we just have to figure out what the b is. And there's a temptation to say, oh, the b is negative 8. But we only get the value of b if we have the y-intercept, and that means it has to be 0b. So as soon as we see that this is a 3 rather than a 0, we cannot call that value b anymore. So here's what we do in that situation. We can't call this uh, b, but this is an ordered pair, and it is an x together with a y, and we can plug those into this equation. So we can say the y is negative 8, and then we have the negative 5 from the m, and then for the x, that would be 3, and then we do plus b. And as we learned before, anytime you have an equation and there's only one variable in it, you can use algebra to solve for that. So I'm going to start using my algebra skills to try and get that b by itself. So the first thing I would do is simplify here. Negative 5 times 3 is negative 15. And then this negative 15 is connected to the b by addition, so I want to add the opposite to both sides. So if I add 15 right here, it'll cancel the negative 15. And I add 15 to the other side to keep things balanced. And over here, the negative 8 plus 15 is positive 7. And on the right, the 15s have canceled, and we just have the b. So b is 7. But that's not my answer. That's just the value of b. Remember, in this one up here, when we knew m and b, we could write the equation. Well, on this example right here, we knew m from the beginning, and now we know b as well. So we can take that together with that and say, okay, so y is equal to m, negative 5, times x, plus b, which is 7. And now we have the equation of the line. So what we're seeing here that's different from before is trying to find the equation where you have the slope and a point, but the point is not the y-intercept. So this review example, when we did have the y-intercept, that was quick and easy. Just plug in the m, plug in the b, done. And then when you look at how different is it when you don't have the y-intercept, there's a little bit of algebra that has to go on. You plug the m in, you plug the x and y in, that leaves you with just the b. You do the algebra to get b, and now you have the m and b, which you can go back and plug into the original format to get your equation. Make sure you leave the x and y variables in there, because we want to use this equation to make predictions and estimates and so on. So we need places to plug in x's to get out y's. So here's the steps that we just went through. So this is a procedure that you can use to find the equation of a line given the slope and a point, even if it's not the y-intercept. So start with the equation y equals mx plus b, and substitute the slope for m, and substitute your ordered pair for the x and the y. When you do that, the only variable left in the equation should be b, so you would then solve for that b. And now, you have m from the beginning, you have b figured out at this point, so you can substitute your values for m and b into the equation y equals mx plus b, and that'll give you your equation of the line. The equation of the line has to maintain the variable x and y in it, so do not substitute for the variables x and y. You do plug the x and y in to help you solve for b, 
but once you find that, you use that and the m to get your equation and leave the variables x and y in that equation. Continuing on in section 5.4, on page number 10, we're going to look at a couple more examples of trying to find equations of lines. So find the equation of the line with the slope m equals negative 5 thirds and passing through the point negative 4, negative 2. As we talked about on the previous page, you want to start off with the standard equation of the line, the slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b. And you would want to plug this m in. And if that was b, we could plug it in. If this was a 0, that would be b, and we could plug it in right away and be done. But as soon as you see that that's not a 0, this is not your y-intercept. At that point, you have to just think of this as an x and a y. So we know m. We have an x. We have a y. Let's plug all those in y is negative 2, the m is negative 5 thirds, the x is negative 4, and then we have plus b. So we only have that one variable and we're going to try and solve for that. So I'm going to do a little bit of simplification. Right here I could do the, think of this as 4 over 1, so negative 5 times negative 4 would be positive 20 over 3, and then we'd have the plus b over there and I want to solve that for b. I could just move this over and b would be by itself, but there are fractions and I would have to get a common denominator. So I think I'll go ahead and show you a reminder of clearing fractions in an equation. We have one, two, three terms. The only denominator is three. So I'm going to multiply every one of those terms on both the left and the right side by the number three to clear fractions out. So every single one of those three terms gets multiplied by 3. And here's the one that's most important. This 3 cancels that 3. That was our only denominator, so as soon as we do that step, the fractions are gone. And then bringing that up here, on the left I have negative 6. On the right, the 3 is canceled. I just have 20. And then I have plus 3b. So I want to try and get this b by itself. So I would subtract 20 from both sides. On the left, that gives negative 26, and on the right, those cancel, and I'm left with just the 3b. It's a little annoying here that I have a 6 and a b, and they look very similar, so just be careful with that. This is our variable b right here. It has the 3 connected by multiplication, so I would divide on both sides. Those 3s would cancel, and the b would be left by itself. And it looks like b is equal to negative 26 thirds. And that was a little harder than the other ones that we did because of the fractions. And then the other thing to keep in mind is we're not done because the equation of the line would be y equals some number times x plus some number. Right now I've just figured out b so I know what that last number piece is. I still have to write out my equation. So the equation would be y equals the m is negative 5 thirds times x and then it would be plus b but we're adding a negative so that would just show up as a minus minus 26 thirds. So there's my equation of the line. The m was given a lot of work for us to get the b, but once we get that, we could plug it in and we have our equation of the line finished. All right, let's look at another one. And in this variation, they're asking us to find an equation of the line that's passing through the given points negative 3, negative 2, and negative 1, negative 8. And the key difference on this one is the slope is not given at all. And when we do the equation of the line, we're looking to have this y equals mx plus b sort of format where they give us the m, we find the b, but this time they haven't done that where they give us either one of those. So we have to do a little bit more work this time. We're going to have to find the m ourselves. But when we first saw slope back in chapter 3, we used change in y over change in x to calculate slope, and so we can do that here when they give us two points. So my m would be the change in the y values divided by the change in the x values. And I'll start off with the one on the right and say that y value is negative 8 minus this y value which is negative 2. And then I have to do that in the same order for the x's. So starting off on the right again, the first x here is negative 1. And then minus this x which would be negative 3. And then just being careful with the signs here, two negatives make a positive 2 and these two negatives make that a positive 3. And then simplifying a little further, I get negative 6 over 2, and finally I end up with negative 3. So at this point I have the slope, 
and on every other problem we've done so far, we, they gave us the slope, we plugged it in. And so we're going to do that here as well. If they gave us the y-intercept, we would know b and could plug that in too. But that's not a zero. That's not a zero. So neither of those is the y-intercept, so neither of these is b. I'm going to have to find b the long way, like we have been on the others. At this point, the question becomes, should I use this point or should I use that point? And the answer is, it really doesn't matter at all. Either one that you use, you'll still end up with the same value for b. I'll just go ahead and pick this one just because the numbers are a little smaller instead of using the 8, but it really doesn't matter. So I'm going to say that's my x and that's my y. So plugging those in, y is negative 2 equals m, which we just found right here, is negative 3. And then the x value is also negative 3. Sorry, that's a little confusing there that those match, but this was the m and this is the x, and the m and the x both happen to be negative 3 with the ordered pair I picked, and then plus b. And the b is a mystery, so that's going to stay as a variable for now, and I'm going to have to try and solve for it. So minus 2 here, negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9 there, plus b. I want this b by itself, so I subtract 9 from both sides. That would cancel these 9s and I'd get negative 11 on the left equals b on the right. So now remember this was m right here, so I know m, I know b, so I can get the equation. y equals mx plus b and plus a negative 11 would just be written as a minus 11. So there's the equation of the line and that's the, the way you'd have to do that anytime you're given two points and no slope. You'd have to do the work to find the slope yourself and then you could pick either point you wanted and use that to uh, help you find your B over here. All right, I'm going to also take a moment on this one to show you a trick on the calculator. If they give you two ordered pairs like this, we can make a little table of X's and Y's and say, all right, what are the X's and Y's that they gave us? The first X is negative 3 and the Y that goes with that is negative 2. On the other ordered pair they gave us an x of negative 1 and a y value of negative 8. And what I'm going to do here is have the calculator find this equation for me by putting these numbers into list 1 and these numbers into list 2 like we've done with data sets in the past to make a scattergram. So let me show you the way that would look on the calculator. I would go into the stat menu and choose edit. I'd put my two x's in, negative 3 and negative 1, and I'd move over to L2 and put in my y values, negative 2 and negative 8, and then the calculator can actually do the rest for us from there. If I hit the stat key again, and then I go over to this calc menu using the arrow keys, if you look at number 4 down here, linear regression, that finds a linear, of the equa linear equation for us of the form y equals mx plus b, they use an a, but it's the same idea, y equals ax plus b for data that we have stored in L1, L2. So I have that highlighted, so I'm going to press enter, and then I'm going to tell it where my lists were. My first list was in L1, comma, my second list was in L2. And when I press enter there, it's going to tell me the coefficient of x is negative 3, and the constant term is negative 11. And if you look at our equation, the coefficient of x was negative 3, and the constant term was negative 11. So this is a really cool trick we can use on the calculator, where it's going to find the slope and the intercept for us. One thing just to be aware of is if it's supposed to be a fraction, it's going to give decimals. And that's usually not going to be acceptable on a test or on my, my, on my math lab. So it works well when there's integer values for um, m and b. And it would also work any time you're allowed to put a decimal approximation. But if I just glance up here, if we had something like this, that's going to come out as a messy decimal. And if we put that into my math lab, we'd get marked wrong. So for right now, this is what I showed you on the calculator is just a way to double check. And I will do a quick uh, mention of the steps. So I put the data in L1 and L2. And then I hit the stat key. I chose the calc menu. And then from there, I chose the one that said lin regression ax plus b. 
and then I needed to tell it where the data was, so I put in an L1 and comma an L2. Just a reminder where the L1 and L2 are. If you look on the calculator, uh, above the 1 it says L1. So if you wanted to hit that, you hit second key and then L1. And then above the L2, you see that blue L2. So you'd hit the blue second key and then an L2 when you want to get that one. And the comma key is right there above the 7. On the previous page, I showed you how to use the graphing calculator to figure out the equation of the line when we were given two points. And I warned you that that might not work well if we were expecting to give fractions. But on this problem, uh, it's going to work perfectly. Let's go ahead and read through it and I'll explain why. Use your graphing calculator to find an approximate equation of the line passing through the points negative 4.57 comma negative 8.29 and 7.17 comma negative 2.69. Find the slope and the constant term to two decimal places. Sorry, round them to two decimal places. So the good news here is they're telling us they're fine with the decimal value for the slope and the intercept. And that's what that calculator feature is going to give us. So that's actually kind of perfect to use the calculator on this one. Plus, if we did it by hand, when we do change in y over change in x to figure out our slope, we would have to deal with these really messy numbers. We'd use our calculator to help us, but it would still be kind of a messy process to go through. So instead... I would suggest we make a table of x's and y's. So my first ordered pair is negative 4.57 and negative 8.29. And the second ordered pair they gave us was 7.17 and negative 2.69. And I want to take that table and I want to transfer that into the calculator by putting the x values in L1 and the y values in L2. So I'm going to go ahead and bring the calculator in at this point. I'm going to hit the stat key to get myself into the stat menus. I'm going to press the edit option. And I have some data in there from the previous page. So I'll highlight the list, clear and down arrow erases that old list. Highlight the L1, clear and down arrow will erase that one. And I'm going to put these new messy X's in there, negative 4.57 and 7.17. I'm going to just arrow over to the second list and put in negative 8.29 and negative 2.69. So I have those two ordered pairs in, and I'm going to let the calculator do the rest from here. I'm going to press the stat key, and I'm going to go over to the calc menu. I'm going to arrow down to number 4, linear regression, AX plus B. I'm going to press enter. It's going to want to see what my lists are. So I'm just going to move this off screen for a minute uh, where you can see the keys I'm pressing. The L1 is right here, so I'm going to hit the second key and L1, and then comma, and then the second key and L2. If I slide that back down, you can see what that did. So that said the linear regression where the data is in list 1 and list 2. And I'll press enter, and it's going to say your equation is the form y equals ax plus b, where a is 0 0.47700170036, and b is negative 6.11, and so on. This r and r squared, that's some statistics stuff that we don't need in this class, so you can just ignore that. Your calculator might not actually even show you that, which is fine. You only need the a and the b for what we're doing right now. They said to round these to two decimal places, so the slope, which is the coefficient of x, which they're calling a instead of m, looks like it would be 0.48 because of that 7. I'm just going to write that over here on the side. My slope is approximately 0.47. And then B would be approximately negative 6.11. So there's my two decimal places for M and B. And as we started off this section saying, if you know M and B, you've got your equation. Because the format is Y equals MX plus B. So here we could say y is equal to 0 0.47. Sorry, that was supposed to have been an 8. My apologies. Let me just show you that one more time. That was 477. So that 7 is causing us to round that one up to an 8. So that would be y is equal to 0 0.48 times x and then plus b. And again, we're adding a negative. So I would just write that as minus 6.11 and that would be my equation. And that equation should go through both of those points. Alright, let's look at one more example. Find an equation of the line. Find an equation for the line that's shown on the graph below. 
So there's a couple approaches we could do to this. One would be to just try and identify some good, solid, nice, clean, ordered pairs. That one looks like it's intersecting right on grid lines, and that's left three up zero. So there's an ordered pair. There's another ordered pair, it looks like, right here that's a nice one. Let's draw that over here. So that looks like it's left one up five, so that's negative one, five. It looks like there's another nice one right here. That looks like left five, down five. And you actually only need two ordered pairs to get the equation of the line. Um, it can be a little confusing with these numbers being the same, so I'm going to go ahead and use this one and this one to attempt to find the equation. Now the first thing that I would do with those typically would be uh, find the slope. But on a graph like this, honestly, it might be easier just to go ahead and use the triangle method. We're going from this point to that one is over 2 and up 5. So over 2 up 5. And then slope is rise over run. And it looks like when we go over 2, which is the run, the rise would be 5 to get back on the line. So when we go over 2, the rise is 5. So our slope should be 5 halves right there. And then now I, I don't need both points anymore. If you know your slope, you just need one point. I'll go ahead and go with this one with the negative 3 and the 0 and say that that's my x and that's my y. And so I have y equals mx plus b is the general form of the line. Using this ordered pair, the y is 0, the m is 5 halves, the x is negative 3, and the b is a mystery. So we'll try and figure that out by using algebra. And this time, I would just make that over 1. I would simplify this by multiplying across, so negative 15 over 2 plus b. Now last time I had one like this, I multiplied through to get rid of the fractions. This time, I don't think that's really necessary. I did it last time because I didn't want to have to add the two fractions and get a common denominator. But here I'm adding to 0, which is easy to do with any number. If I add 15 halves to both sides, that'll cancel over here on the left. And when I add 15 halves to 0, I'm just going to end up with 15 halves. So on the left we have 15 over 2 and on the right we have b. So we know b right here, we have our slope right here, and we want to put those two together to get the equation. So y equals m, 5 halves, times x, plus b. We finally got a positive for our intercept there, so plus 15 halves. So there's the equation with the m plugged in and the b plugged in. Anytime you're doing this and you end up with fractions, I think that's a sign that the calculator wouldn't have been the best method to use because the calculator is going to give a decimal and my math lab is always going to insist on uh, using fractions or integers unless they ask for a decimal. But I'm still going to go ahead and use the calculator on this one anyways, just as a check. So let me go ahead and enter in our data values. I'll just use these two that I circled. So stat and edit, and then clear out the old list, and enter in this x value, negative 3, and that x value, negative 1, and then move over for the y values and use 0 for this one, 5 for that one, and then I'm going to let the calculator get the equation and see if it matches these numbers. So stat, calc, number 4, linear regression, my lists are L1, comma L2, and it says that the slope should be 2.5. If you do 5 halves, that's 2.5 or 2.5. The intercept was supposed to be 7.5. 2 goes into 15 7 times with 1 left over, so that's 7.5 or 7.5. So even though the calculator is giving a decimal, it's still useful as a check because I can think about what would the decimals be for these numbers and see if they match that. So I did all the work by hand but I did it on the calculator also and that did give me an opportunity to verify that I had done the work correctly with all the stuff I did by hand. Alright, last page of section 5.4 here and we're going to look at an application to what we've been doing. Let's go ahead and read through it. Let S be a person's savings in thousands of dollars, T years since 1995, 
some pairs of values of t and s are listed in the table below. So they've given us values of years since 1995 and then how much um, the person has in their savings accounts uh, at that time and it's in thousands of dollars so when it says 14 it's actually $14,000. And part A says to use regression to find an equation of the line that describes the relationship between t and s. And that's what I was showing you on the previous pages. So the idea would be that I would take these input values of t and put them in L1. And I would take these output values of s and put them into L2. And I would do that linear regression we've done on previous pages. And I didn't mention it to you before, but the nice thing about that linear regression process is it doesn't just work for two ordered pairs. You can put in all of your ordered pairs and still come up with a line. But I want to show you something about how that works. Um, before we go to enter it in the calculator, I want to take a look at a picture of this graph by going into the list and instead of going straight to the equation, first stopping off to look at a scattergram for this. So let's go ahead and enter that data in. So I'll hit stat and edit. I'll clear out those old lists that I had. And I'm going to enter these into L1. So 1, 4, 5, 7, and 10. And then I'm going to arrow over and then put these saving amounts into L2. So 5, 14, 17, 23, and 32. And I want to look at a graph to, of a scatter plot to see if this actually looks linear. It doesn't really make sense to find the equation of the line that fits it unless it looks like these are really kind of forming a line. So when we're going to do a graph, we want to make sure we get our window right. So for the window, it looks like my inputs go from 1 to 10. So I'll use a minimum of 0 and a maximum of 11, and that'll hold all these different inputs from 1 to 10. And I think a scale of 1 is fine. On my outputs, they go from 5 to 32. So I want something smaller than the smallest and bigger than the biggest. So I'll use 0 and 35, and I'll number in 5s. And I want to do the scatter plot of that, but I don't know if I have that set up. So let me hit the Y equals key to see what I do have set up. I have a couple equations in there, so I'm going to clear those out. And my plot is not activated. So I'm going to use the arrow keys to get plot 1 flashing. Then I'm going to press enter, and when I come down, I'll see that that is now kind of activated. So it's going to draw that plot if I press the graph button. And I could probably press that graph button right now, and it would work fine. Um, our plot 1 should always be set up to do a scatter, but I'm just going to look real quick and make sure. It says stat plot right there. It's in blue, so I'll hit second and stat plot. And let's see the details on plot 1. Plot 1 is turned on. We just did that. It's a scatter plot, and the x's are in L1, the y's are in L2, and it's going to draw squares for each point. That's perfect. So if I hit graph, I should see a picture. So the question is, does that look linear? And that looks very linear to me. I don't know if it's perfectly linear or not. It's hard to tell. It looks like it almost. Um, but it's a very good linear pattern for sure. So it's either perfect or very linear, one of the two. And I'm going to use the calculator to come up with the equation. And this is where I get a real benefit from the calculator. Because if I'm doing it by hand, um, I would use two points to figure out the equation. Because I would use two points to get the slope. So would I use these two, or these two, or these two, or these two, or maybe these two, or those two, or those two, or these two, or those two. And you have all these choices, and if it's not perfectly linear, you're going to get a different equation from every one. And so then you have this wrestling match of like, well, which one is the best out of all of these? And when you go to stat and calc and choose the linear regression option, it uses some statistical formulas to figure out the equation that would be the best fit for this data set. So we automatically, not only do we get a quick, easy equation when we use linear regression, but we get the best possible equation. So I'm going to choose linear regression, and I'm going to tell it where my data is, L1, comma, L2, and I'm going to press Enter, and it's going to give me that equation. So y equals, it would be mx plus b, and the m is 3, so 3x, and plus b, and the b is 2. Whoops, put the, the b there, let me put the 2. I'm just going to copy that again, cleaner. We have plenty of room here. We don't need all this space because the calculator did all the work. So y is equal to 3x plus 2 would be the equation. This isn't a big deal, but when that R is a 1, it means the data was perfectly linear. So in this case, this equation would actually hit every single line dead on. Since that's true, I just want to take a look at it. 
I'll hit y equals over here, put in that equation, 3x plus 2, and press graph again. And you can see that that equation that the calculator gave us um, definitely fits the pattern. It seems to hit every one of those points kind of right through the middle, and that is because it's perfectly a linear data set. So there's our equation, nice and fast. And we use the calculator and linear regression to make it happen. So now let's make use of that equation. Use the equation to estimate the amount that would be saved in 2012. So all we have to do is plug that in. And whoops, mistake number two on this page. Um, this is fine for the equation, but our input variable is, you will use a different color, our input variable is t, and our output variable is s, so I need to just rewrite this equation real quick. This is fine for thinking about it, even if I knew, I, if you know, I made a mistake, but if I hadn't, and I knew I was going to go straight to these, I still might have done it with the y and the x's first, and then translate it over to the variables of the problem my brain because of all the algebra I've done in my life is really kind of tied in with X's and Y's as the input and the output so I like to start there and then switch it over to that variable alright so let's use that equation to estimate the amount saved in 2012 so is 2012 the amount saved or is it a time is it savings or time that's a time it's a year do we plug that there no because T is the number of years since 1995. So we don't plug in the 2012, we have to think in 2012 how many years had it been since 1995. So the math on that is fairly simple. 2012 minus 1995 and we can do that subtraction and I believe we get 17 but I've made enough mistakes on this page so I'm just going to double check and yes that is 17 and since that's the number of years since 1995 that's T I could plug that into the equation so S equals 3 times 17 plus 2 and I'll just put that in the calculator real quick so 3 times 17 plus 2 that should be 51 plus 2 it should be 53 and then 53 what? You know, is it 53 pounds, dollars, feet, cubic inches? What is it? It's S, and S is the savings in thousands of dollars. So that would be $53,000. And when you get that answer, there's two ways you could write it. You could write 53,000 like I did here, or you could use the dollar sign and say 53 and then write the word thousand. And you just have to pay attention in my math lab to which way is going to be right. I would argue they're both correct, but if they show you a box to put your answer in, and then over here they say thousands, and they have the dollar sign right there, then you're going to put in just a 53 to make it look like this. But if they have the dollar sign and they don't have this word at all, then you would need to put in the full 53000 to make sure you had the right amount because it's not $53 in savings, it's 53000 And you could write it out with the zeros or this way for me, but my math lab will tell you by putting that word or not putting it whether they want this one or that one. Okay, moving on to part C. They want to know what does the slope mean in terms of the application. So the slope, I would normally say, is change in y over change in x. In this case, our output is not y, but s, and our input is not x, but t. And our slope was the coefficient of x in my equation, or the coefficient of t, either way you want to think about it, and that was a 3. And I always want to think of slope as a fraction when I'm interpreting it, so if it's a whole number, I'm going to put it over 1. I'm going to put the units of t on the bottom. t was the year since 90, 1995, so that 1 would represent 1 year. And 3 was the savings in thousands of dollars, so that 3 would represent $3,000. And then I would go ahead and simplify that a little by multiplying those together and making that 3,000 instead of 3 thousands over one year. And then I would interpret this from the bottom up. For each additional year that goes by, the amount of money that this person has in savings is increasing by $3,000.
So they're saving $3,000 each year, and so that's their savings account is increasing by that amount each year. All right, that's it for Section 5.4.